Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is concept of baseband signals. This is the topic from the subject PCS that is principles of communication system. As I mentioned earlier, I already created one video uh, related to this subject uh, where I have covered some basic things. I will provide the link in the de description box. Do watch that video before watching this. Now, uh, before studying the concept of baseband signal, let us discuss one important topic related to the same thing that is signal transmission through LTI system. Now, what is this LTI? The term LTI stands for linear and time invariant system. Actually, this is the part from the subject signals and systems. But whatever the things are required in this subject, PCS, I will just explain briefly. So the, the signal which is passing through any system, what is the system? System is basically any device to which we are applying certain input signal and that device produces certain output signal after modifying the input. So if the signal satisfies linearity theorem and it is time invariant, that means as time changes, the quality of the signal is not changing, then such a system is known as LTI, that is linear time invariant system. As I mentioned, this topic we are going to study in detail in the subject signals and systems. Okay, so presently we are talking about LTI, that is linear time invariant system. One more thing, another name to such systems is LSI, that is linear shift invariant systems. Now, this is the block diagram of LTI system. So, as shown in this diagram, input is denoted by X of T, output is denoted by Y of T. This is the block diagram of LTI system. I have told you in short, a system is basically a device which accepts input, modifies it and produces required output. So, output is Y of T, input is X of T. The function done by the system is denoted by H of T. H of T is also called impulse response of the system. All these terms we are going to study in detail in the subject signals and systems. Presently, as far as this part is concerned, just remember like this, this is the block diagram of LTI system. And output of this system is given like this. Y of T is X of T asterisk H of T. Now, this is the new notation for you. It's not multiplication. This asterisk notation indicates convolution operation. So, this asterisk notation is known as convolution. Again, this part is there in detail for the subject signals and systems. Presently, for this subject, just remember it like this. Output of any LTI system is X of T asterisk H of T asterisk is the convolution which is some mathematical operation. Now all the calculations in this subject in the in the subject uh, PCS principles of communication system all the calculations are done using Fourier transform. Again as far as this subject is concerned you don't have to study in detail the Fourier transform. I will provide you the required things which are which are necessary for the calculation purpose. Just remember like this if you have any signal like X of T it's Fourier is denoted by bidirectional arrow. Why bidirectional arrow? Because after calculating Fourier, you can well convert back into the original uh, signal like you can calculate the inverse Fourier. So if signal is X of T, its Fourier is denoted by X of Omega. Do not get confused. In earlier classes, you might have used the notation X of F. This is again valid. But when you write Omega, it represents discrete Fourier transport. Presently, we are talking about Omega. So remember it like this. Whenever you will take Fourier transform of any signal, notation becomes capital. So if it is small x, it becomes capital X. In place of T, you will have to write Omega. And one more very important part for this subject. Whenever you will come across this notation, as I mentioned, this is known as the convolution operation, which is some mathematical operation. If you take Fourier transform, convolution gets transformed 
into simple multiplication. Do remember this simple rule. So, if you are performing convolution and if you take Fourier transform, convolution is converted into simple multiplication, normal multiplication. Okay. So, I have written this expression. This is the standard equation of output of any system through which some signal is transmitting. Now, if you take Fourier transform, so I will write it like this, take FT, take Fourier transform of both sides. So you will get Y of omega is equals to X of omega. Very simple, Fourier of Y of T is capital Y of omega, X of T is capital X of omega. This is convolution operation. As I mentioned, convolution becomes simple multiplication. So I am marking dot and Fourier of H of T is capital H of omega. Very simple, just write the capital notation, replace T by omega. So let us say, this is equation number one. Now, everyone wants the distortion less condition. What's the distortion less condition? As the name indicates, it, it's pretty simple. There should not be any distortions in the signal which is transmitting through some medium. What are the media like coaxial cable, like fiber optic cable? So there should not be any distortion. Now, another thing related to this equation one, anything in a mass, you should write, you should express it as magnitude into e raised to j into phase. What is this? In maths, you might have learned two types of systems like rectangular coordinate system, then polar coordinate system. So you have some magnitude, you have some angle. So if, if value of any current say it is 3 at an angle 60 degree. How do you express it mathematically? In this subject, or rather in electronics, the procedure is 3 is the magnitude, 60 degree is angle, which is known as a phase. How do I write it? I will write it like this, 3 into e raised to j 60. Same way, it is magnitude into e raised to j into the phase. This is the way how you can represent the equation in terms of magnitude and phase. So, if I want to write equation of h of omega, h of omega is what Fourier transform of h of t. h of t is impulse response. So, h of omega is Fourier transform of impulse response. I can write it like this mod of h of omega. What I said, anything can be expressed like magnitude into e raised to j phase. So, into e raised to j of omega. Say, phase is omega. To avoid the confusion, you can well write j omega to the base h, which represents it is the phase related to omega. So this is the equation for h of omega. Similarly, for x of omega, if you want to write in terms of magnitude and phase, you can write it like this, mod of x of omega into e raised to j omega base x. Base x indicates it is the phase of x of omega. On the same lines, for equation 1, I can write it like this, y of omega is this term, so I will write it like this, mod of y of omega into e raised to j omega base y is equals to. Do remember there are two terms related to this. So related to x, I have written separate equation that is mod of x of omega into e raised to j omega x into this term, mod of h of omega into e raised to j omega h. This is the way how you can write the equation in terms of Fourier rather in terms of magnitude. Now, if you want to plot the graph of this thing, do remember the simple words. When you write this side, it indicates magnitude of h of omega. In simplified language, this is known as magnitude response. Magnitude response. So, if you plot the graph of mod of h of omega versus omega by taking certain readings, then this is the standard graph like this. So it is a bidirectional graph. The graph is like this. This is the graph of mod of h of omega versus omega. Omega is known as angular frequency. Similarly, we have written everywhere uh, the terms like e raised to j omega n j omega x. Again, in some subject, instead of omega, the notation theta is used. So you may well write this theta h, then this theta x. 
any notations we will do this becomes theta this becomes theta and so on so theta again indicates the phase shift like we have used the notation omega as i said any notation will do if you want to plot the graph of phase theta or omega is known as phase then the graph of theta or phase will be like this this is the phase plot these are the standard graphs as far as the transmission of signal through LTI system is concerned. Now, let us complete the derivation. If asked in the exam, you should know this nature of the graph. So I have told you how to draw the graph. Now, we want the distortionless condition. As I mentioned, distortionless means there should not be any distortions. Suppose input signal, input is denoted by x of t. If it is delayed by amount, td td is some time period let us say input is delayed or getting late by one second then td td that is delay time will be one second in this case this input will be denoted by x of t minus td so if you want distortionless transmission then the output y of t should be equals to x of t minus t D, or you may well say output y of d should be proportional to x of t minus t d because we have used the word time invariant means even if there is some delay output should should be unchanged there should not be any delay as far as output is concerned so uh, let us assume proportionality constant as k so i am removing this proportionality sign i am writing k into x of t minus t d take Fourier transform of both sides so you will get y of omega is equals to k is constant it remains as it is now another important point since you haven't yet studied Fourier transforms as far as the part of signal is concerned so i am telling you some tricks how to remember this equation so if you have signal x of t its Fourier is denoted by x of omega if you have signal x of t minus t d then it becomes x of omega into a raised to minus j omega t d this is one of the property of of the Fourier transform simply remember this property so if you take Fourier uh, Fourier of y of t is y of omega k remains as it is Fourier of x is capital X of omega into e raised to minus j omega t d this is the output or the final equation for the response output response of distortionless for the distortionless transmission system now we know that uh, from equation one we have written the equation like this y of omega is equals to x of omega into h of omega this was equation one so i if i will rearrange it i can write it like this h of omega is equals to y of omega upon x of omega simple rearrangement x of omega is transferred over here so it becomes equals to h of omega that's what i have written so from this equation if i will transfer x of omega over here then i will get h of omega which i know that it is y of omega upon x of omega so if i will transfer x of omega over at this side at the lhs i will get e raised to minus j omega t d this is known as the frequency response of a distortionless transmission line. So this is the derivation of frequency response. Now let us discuss the concept of baseband signals. Next, the most important part from this chapter is concept of baseband signal. The question can be like this. What is the baseband communication or defined baseband signal or what are its limitations? I will explain you uh, in short. See, how to remember it? As the name indicates, it is a base band. What, what is the meaning of band of a signal? Band means some frequency range is there. For example, if I'm talking about audio signal, right now I'm talking, this is the audio signal, this is a speech signal. The frequency range of this speech signal is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is known as the band of frequencies. So remember this word throughout the ENTC branch. Band means certain range of frequencies like in audio it is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is known as a band of frequencies. Now base band means it is the band of frequency 
transmitter from the transmitter end everyone knows in very simplified language communication means one side there is a transmitter which transmits signal there is some medium like coaxial cable like fiber optic cable through which signals are transmitting and at the other end we have a receiver this is very simplified i have explained you in a very simplified language now baseband means the band of frequencies which are transmitted which are sent from the transmitter end so this is the definition of uh, baseband band of frequencies from the source or from the transmitter for example for telephony systems basic telephony systems this range is from 0 to 3.5 kilohertz for tv signals the range of video signal is from 0 to 4.3 megahertz now another very important part very important characteristics of baseband signal is the transmission takes place without modulation dear students throughout this subject we are going to study different modulation techniques this is just starting of this subject unit number one we are uh, learning so modulation means in very simplified language mix up the signal with some high frequency signal so that distortions will be minimized and it will be easy uh, for the transmission of signal this another signal which you are going to mix up with original signal is known as a carrier signal and this technique is known as modulation but in case of baseband communication the word itself indicates it is taking place without modulation you are not mixing any external signal so the basic definition of baseband communication is the transmission taking place without modulation is known as baseband communication and since there is no modulation there is no mixing of any other frequency there is no frequency shift frequency shift means change in the frequency so there won't be any change in the frequency frequency remains as it is for example examples of baseband communication are local telephone system which we use as a landline and pcm that is pulse code modulation which we are going to study in later units now limitations this is most important part what are the limitations of baseband communication so first limitation is it is only used for wired transmission that means transmission of a signal takes place through wires only like coaxial cable like fiber optic cable but it is not it cannot take place through the free space or through broadband uh, system what, what's the broad, broadband broadband is basically communication uh, in case of satellites communication through fiber optic cable and so on so this is the first limitation second limitation is small frequency range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz so only for short range so this system is applicable only for a short distance transmission takes place uh, only for short distance and not for longer distances third not used for broadband communication i have already explained broadband is through fiber optic cable through uh, uh, satellite systems and so on then since the ba band of frequency is limited it may happen that when you pass the signal when you pass many signals at a time through the channel there can be mixing of signals which is also called aliasing or inter symbol interference so there is there are chances of mixing of signal and the last important limitation or drawback is since modulation is not used means no other frequency carrier is mixed up with the signal it requires a large high top antenna so high top transmission antenna required will be very very large this is the reason why we cannot use such systems for longer distance communication because uh, uh, the because of the requirement of large height of antenna so this this is about the baseband communication or concept of baseband signal as i mentioned in first unit you are just the basic concept but in all other earlier units we are going to study all these things in detail so that's it for today's session dear students as i mentioned earlier the remaining parts of unit number one for this subject are common for signals and systems which i have already uh, completed so let us stop uh, the video at this stage itself and uh, we'll continue in the next uh, from the next uh, video session we'll continue with unit number two so thank you thanks a lot